This Photoshop video tutorial is going to cover Refine Edge, Mask Edge, and the Masking Palette. To start, we have an image of a girl, and then underneath that layer, I have another image of a water scene. I would like to merge the two together, where the girl is in front of the water. Now, given that this is a dirty background, meaning that there's a lot of things going on with a lot of colors, as it will then overlay this blue water, it should be interesting to see how I can get the two layers to blend together properly. To start, I'm going to click on this top layer. While there are a variety of ways to go about creating these masks, I'm going to approach it in a way that you may not necessarily know, just to keep this more interesting. I'm going to create a blank mask for this by clicking on the Add Layer Mask button. There's a blank mask across this image, meaning nothing's actually changed. It has, however, activated this mask palette, which otherwise could be found from Window, Masks. To start, I'm going to click on the Color Range button, which also can be found under Select Color Range. Now normally, before you create your mask, you would go Select Color Range, and that would create the mask. In this case, I created it in a different order, just to be different. Once I click on color range, I'm going to select her hair, and then I'm going to click OK. This is the start. I'm going to hide this background of the water so it's less distracting. I'm going to click on this mask layer, brush, and then I'm just going to fill in the bulk of this that I don't want. I'm just looking to cut out everything except the hair. Now that I have a rough cutout of the hair, I'm going to duplicate that layer so that we have one that has the hair this other one I'm going to invert so that we have everything but the hair. Once merged together you can see where the masking is going on. I'm then going to paint back into that layer filling in the worst of it. Now what we're left with is this halo around the hair. But when I put the water in, you still can't see it. So what we need to do is actually brush away all of this background. Now what I've created is one layer of the just the hair and one layer of just the face and torso. Now when I show the water, the water is showing up. The hair, however, looks off, so we're just going to fix this using the refined mask, which is also called a mask edge. Let me show you. If I just hide those and work on the bottom layer, this is completely just to describe. If I click on the magic wand and I click something, up here there is a refine edge button. If I click on it, it's going to bring up this palette. This palette is the exact same thing as this button down here, mask edge. The difference is refine edge comes up before you create the mask. Mask edge shows up after you've already created the mask. Personally, I'd rather already create the mask and modify it, rather than try and modify it before I've even created it. To me, it's a little bit of the horse before the cart. But that Refine Edge button is available on several of these tools. I'm going to move this mask palette out of the way. 
click on Mask Edge, and this brings up the same dialog box. I have the option of Marching Ants, Overlay, On Black, On White, Black and White, On Layers, and Reveal Layer. Reveal Layer shows the layer without any modification to it. I'm going to use On Layers so that I could see the hair on the water background. I'm going to start by clicking Smart Radius. In this case it didn't do anything, so I'm going to move the radius manually. Then I'm going to come down and I'm going to try all the different options. As I've found, it depends on the colors that are being mixed together and whether any of these have any dramatic effect or not. Several of these tools are really doing nothing more than a blur. For example, this radius is a blur, the feather adds a blur, smooth is a blur. Contrast, however, actually sharpens the edge. Shift edges pulls it in or pushes it out. I'm just going to leave it back where it was. There's also a decontaminate color option. This is another one that I don't find that it does anything particularly useful. So now that you've gotten an idea of these different options that are available in here, let's work on this mask. What we need to do is tighten this mask on the outset before we can expect it to be refined. Just a reminder that we have many more videos over at theartofretouching.com that are not available on iTunes or YouTube. They are all available for free. We are currently working on our first low-cost product. It will only be a few dollars. Please consider making a purchase when it becomes available because it is that kind of support that will help us keep new videos coming. Lastly, if you would like for us to cover any particular topic, please email us at info at theartofretouching.com. We would love to hear from you if you have any positive or negative comments about our videos. We have thick skin. We can take it. With that done, I can go back into color range. And I can add to this selection. Okay, that's that's looking pretty good for what color range actually does. So I'm going to go okay. Just checking to see that no anomalies happened. That was before, this is after. Before, after. If you look, what it did was it created more holes along the outside for more of a pass-through effect. Now that we have the mask defined a bit better, I can go back into that mask edge. And I can utilize some of these tools that were available to me. I'm going to put a small feather on this. on the outside and then I'm going to put some contrast on it. I'm going to do this edge detection and I'm just going to leave it like that. Click OK. That's how it was and that's what I did. Basically it took all these harsh edges and it softened them up. In order to finish this up, I'll need to do some cloning. So I'm going to create another layer on top. I'm going to put on the stamp. And then I'm just going to kind of fill in some of this that looks a little off. Aside from some of this that actually needs work, a lot of this is really clean. But mostly you get the idea. And of course I can do some more mo more adjusting to the image, uh, some color adjustments to make it blend better. I might even potentially go up and do defringe, which I've shown in another video. That might help blend these a little bit better. 
but for the most part that's how the mask palette color range and refine edge slash mask edge work after a little bit more layer work this is what I ended up with I blurred the water image behind her and I softened up the hair lastly I toned down her face and shirt to better match the scene I was able to soften up the hair enough so that you really can't tell that these were two different pictures If you found this video helpful, please go to www.theartofretouching.com where we have more videos, tips, and tricks to make you a better retoucher.